Say Jesus went. If you know the story, they hung him high, first and wide, hung his head. Come on, they hung him high, stretched and wide. Sing that again. They hung him high. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They hung him high. 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 today. That's not how. That's not how. The story ends. Three days later, he rose again. That's not how. Come on. Say, that's not how. That's not how. The story ends. Three days later, he rose again.
as we got up. Blessings flow. Yes. Happy Resurrection Sunday, Bethel. It is so good to be in the house. There were some folks that were with us last year, not with us right now. You ought to give God a praise that you are the man of the living. Millions didn't make it, but I'm so glad we're some of the ones who did. We thank God. Our young people are going to be leading us today. Sister Olivia Williams Davis is going to lead us in our call to worship, our invocation by Sister Sydney Hayward, our scripture by Sister Kristen Wilson, summary of the Decalogue, Sister Sydney Meeks, uh, our, our acknowledgement of visitors by Albert Meeks Jr., and birthday acknowledgement by, acknowledgement by Jackson Meeks. Young folks are in the house. Yeah. Come on up, Olivia, as you lead us in our call to worship. Amen. Us old folks going to get out the way. <laughs> Good morning. 
God our Father, Christ our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit our Comforer, humankind our family. Reverend Jefferson, Sis Jefferson, Helder Hayward, Reverend Althea Hayward, ministerial staff, officers, members, and friends, good morning. Today is Easter and Youth Participation Sunday. The invocation will be given by Sister Sydney Hayward. Our scripture will be read by Sister Kristen Wilson. The summary of the Decalogue by Sister Sydney Meeks. The announcements by Albert Meeks Jr. And the birthdays by Jackson Meeks. And I am Olivia, your, Olivia Williams Davis, your worship leader. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For a day in thy court, oh wait, never mind. By the, because of the house of the Lord, I seek thy good. Those who be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in the house of the Lord. I have loved thy habitation, thy place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And today we will sing the hymn, He Arose. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to the cross. And the Lord will bear my spirit home. He rose, he rose. He rose from the dead. He rose, he rose, he rose from the dead. He rose, he rose, he rose from the dead. And the Lord shall bear my spirit home. Let us now join with lifting, uplifting voices led by our choir and brother Kristen Wilson. Join in with the choir.
bless you as you're seated. Amen. Ushers, you can take a minute. There, anyone at the door, you can let them in right now. Amen. Does anyone at the door? Okay. God bless you as this wonderful young lady leads us in a word of prayer.
love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Bless you as you see it. Can we give God a praise for these wonderful young people? Amen. 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 And at this time, as we're getting settled, we have a blessing today. Um, sister, and uh, ushers, if you'll help me out, uh, Sister uh, Vivian Simmons was so kind uh, to want to uh, present a wonderful corsage to all of the uh, widows that are in the house. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. So I'm going to ask the ushers to help facilitate that. If God has blessed you to continue on and be blessed, if you're a widow uh, in Christ, would you please raise your hand. Sister, some of you don't know her, but she's got that beautiful pink hat. Sister Simmons, would you raise your hand? If you want to stand, you can. Amen. We know she does amazing and wonderful uh, things in terms of uh, create creativity and we thank you for that amen please raise your hand and save one for my mama amen save one for mama <laughs> that is so nice of you amen all right amen Still need one or two in the choir. Hey, Sister Simmons, I think you counted just right. I think we, <laughs> we're right there. Make sure, do we have anyone else? Widow, we'd like to honor you on today. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about taking care of the widows in the church. Let the church say amen. 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 All right, let's give God a praise. Thank you, Mrs. Simmons. Thank you. What a wonderful and beautiful gesture. Amen. On today. Amen. It's offering time, y'all. It's offering time. God so loved the world that he gave. And we thank God that everyone who was born of God wants to give. You want to be a blessing everywhere you go. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a blessing. Amen. And so we thank God. For those of you who are viewing us virtually on this Resurrection Sunday, thank you for your kindness and your giving. You can give uh, on our website. Or you can also send it in, 2521 North Armstead Avenue. And those that are in the building have given and are giving right now. And please know we are grateful and uh, blessed uh, to have you consider us as a place to plant your seed faith, seed faith offering on today. Amen. And I see quite a few folks that were here for, at, uh, from the 6 o'clock sunrise service. Amen. So we thank you that you thought it not robbery. Just come on and get a little bit more. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of our God. So glad to see Sister Jennifer Solomon. Amen. Back from her surgery. Good to see you, Sister Solomon. Amen. <laughs> Jessica Williams, I saw you somewhere. Amen. She got a you got a uh, you got a crutch, but you don't need it. Amen. That's just for just for decoration. Amen. And Sister Myers, I know you're watching out there. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You'll be back here. Amen. Worshiping in spirit and in truth. Amen. All right, let us all stand as we consecrate these gifts. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you on today for the privilege of giving. And because you gave, you put us in a position to be able to give. 
And so, Lord, put us in, in a better position to bless you so that we won't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, we pray together. All things. God bless you as you're seated. Brother Albert Meeks is coming at this time. Amen. From the mighty Meeks. Amen. Good morning. I am Albert Meeks, Jr. It is my under, honor to and privil privilege to acknowledge our visitors to keep us a breeze from our upcoming events. We would like to acknowledge our visitors this morning. Will all visitors please stand? On behalf of our pastor, Rev. Huh? Wait, 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 just a second. <laughs> all visitors, all oh. visitors, please stand. It's okay. 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 Uh, on behalf of our pastor, Rev. And P. Andre P. Jefferson, Sr., our first lady, Sister Tracy Jefferson, ministerial staff, and the officers and members of Bethel. We are glad that you decided to join us in our res Resurrection Sunday service. We pray that you will feel right at home. So rejoice with us. Sh shout with us. But most of all, praise the Lord with us. You're welcome in the house of the Lord. Again, you're welcome on this blessed Sunday. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Remember. <laughs> remember, I am only 10 years old. <laughs> that was funny. Get up off that Get up off that Bethel membership this week, we are requesting that you save the following dates. Monday, April 10th is the last day to register for month mother-daughter luncheon. All mothers, daughters, aunts, and women who are special in your life. Luncheon will be held on Saturday, April 15th. Please do not forget our relay for life table is out in the north X of the church. Please sign up. Tuesday, April 11th is our inspirational service via Zoom at 7 p.m. Wednesday, April 12th is our Bible study at 11.45 a.m. and 6.45 p.m. Via Zoom, we are studying faith. Don't miss out. Saturday, April 15th, 2023, our church school for adult, adults is at 6.45 p.m. via Zoom and our children Children's Church School is still on spring break, so see you the following Saturday for our children. Before I leave, please don't forget our sick and shut in with a card. Call or visit, but prayers do still work, so please lift up our church family. Yeah. Bethel, Bethel, your kindness made a difference. And your thoughtfulness touched my heart. Thank you for your prayers, cards, phone calls, and sweet blessings. Much love, Sister Jennifer, Jennifer Solomon. Aww. These announcements have been brought to you for our church school youth. Now check out my little brother, Jackson Meeks. <laughs> Everyone having a birthday during the month of April, please stand. Wishes to you. As you celebrate your birthday, this card brings a heartfelt wish that you day 
that your day is filled with all the joy and blessings you, you deserve. Happy birthday. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Proverbs 20, 28, 20. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we turn the service over the pastor, the pastor, Pastor Jefferson Jr. Do better than that. Come on, show them some love. Brother Downey, give me a little bit more on the monitor. Just a little bit more. Amen. I like the way he put it. Y'all get up off me. I'm only 10 years old. Get up off me. <laughs> Amen. That's how you do it. It won't work for me, but it worked for him. But certainly to all those persons who are visiting us, but especially if you're visiting us for the first time, welcome you. And we welcome you with great Jesus joy. And uh, if you're looking for a church home, <laughs> you got it right here. And so um, a little later on after I preach, if uh, I offer an invitation, if you'd like to be a part, come on down. Be a part of the body of Christ known as Bethel AME Church. And you will be glad to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go uh, to Bethel. Amen. We are excited today. We're going to have a special, they've been working a long time, a special praise dance led by Sister Valerie Fauntleroy. I think we got all the age groups uh, in the house. Show them some love as they come. Amen. <laughs> Followed by selection by the choir.
Come on, show them some more love, big man. That was awesome. That was tremendous. Amen. And just to see all of the age groups working together, what a mighty, mighty God that we serve. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Show sister Father the words of love. She's out here just about every night uh, during the week working with persons, and we just want to let you know we appreciate it. Amen. Come on, sing, choir. So more young folks are going to sing.
power. Power, amen. Thank you so much. Are you being blessed this morning? Come on, are you being blessed this morning? Amen. And we thank God. Amen. Energizing us. I told you they were going to do it. Uh, and, and they did it. We thank God on today. It's just good to be here on another Resurrection Sunday. And I was just overjoyed to see my young man, Brother Tyree Campbell. Good to see you, Tyree. We love you. He's a member of our church. Amen. And we thank God as mom and family are here on today. Uh, and don't be sure now if you leave out, you know, stop by the Relay for Life table if you've been doing that. We want to stamp down cancer in our lifetime. Come on, give the Lord a praise. We want to stamp down cancer in our lifetime. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so good and so kind. Thank you, Lord, for this waiting congregation. Lord, you know what they're waiting on. You know what they're waiting for. And some people just came, don't know what they came here for. But Lord, we pray that you would fill them with you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. amen. And amen. Uh, read so well into your hearing by uh, Sister Chrissy Wilson. Philippians, the third chapter, uh, beginning with verse number uh, seven. Amen. Philippians, the third chapter, beginning with verse number seven. Uh, seven, And we find the Apostle Paul lifting up these words. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider it loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow, to attain the resurrection of the day. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Beloved, if you pray with me on this resurrection Sunday, if a sermon must have a theme, let this be it, in the power of his resurrection. In the power of his resurrection. So, choir, we write together on that song. In the power of his resurrection, I want, uh, there's a lot to celebrate today. Uh, there's joy uh, bursting out all over the house. And those of you who are online, you're just getting a fraction of the joy that we have up in here. Uh, this is the Super Bowl for the church. Uh, the best thing about this Super Bowl is that we already know who the winner is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The tomb is empty. Satan is defeated now and forevermore. And I read the Bible from beginning to end. And how many know we've already won? And so we go all out to celebrate today. But after Easter, egg hunts are over. And they had a great one yesterday. And all of the wonderful Easter lilies. And they look great here in the front. And after the wonderful praise dance. And after the tremendous music. And after the Easter Sunday dinners that y'all did not invite me to. <laughs> we, 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 we need to know how to enjoy uh, the effects of, of the Resurrection Sunday in our lives because I've been coming to Easter Sundays as long as I can remember and we thank God for it. But we need to know what is the everyday blessing of Easter? Uh, Jesus got up in victory, but are we walking, talking, and living in victory? 
And I believe I've got some witnesses in the house that can say, I've lost enough. I've been down too much in my past and not to press forward with victory in Jesus. And I submit to you that if you apply what I am suggesting to you today, that you can be absolutely sure in the resurrection victory of Jesus. We find in our text today some of the most beautiful words of the Apostle Paul. He said he, said he has the same desire. He looked back over his life and he tells us how he sold out and on fire for Jesus. And I stopped by to tell you, in these last and evil days, lukewarm ain't going to cut it. This is the time we've got to be more sold out for Jesus than ever before. No straddling the fence, no running with the rabbits and hunting with the hounds. He said, I want you to know this. I consider everything lost compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus. Paul is saying that the greatest blessing is my life in my life is knowing Jesus. Knowing him, growing in him, nothing meant more to him than knowing Jesus. And I'm not talking about a superficial knowing. I'm not talking about something you can just read in the book. I'm not talking about something that somebody told him about Jesus. He said that once I started knowing about Jesus, I found out that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. And I stopped by here to tell you there's nothing better than knowing Jesus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, to know his love, to know his grace, to know of his mercy, to know and experience him as the good shepherd because he says the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Uh, to know him as the light of the world and the light in your life. To know him as your redeemer. To know him as the way, the truth, and the life. To know him as a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. Anybody in here can proudly say that you know him for yourself. Mama may have and Papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. And Paul, he said this, he said, this is more important. He said, I, in, in another portion of scripture, he said, I want you to know who I am. He said, I want you to know I've got all the world's accolades. He got some plaques on his wall. He's got the highest education possible, PhDs on uh, the wall from the rabbinical school. He has an amazing family pedigree. He has a wonderful standing in the community. He's got money because he was a tent maker. No one was more serious about his religion. He was once an enemy of the Christian church and fought with everybody so that he could stop the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, but one day, on his way to the Damascus Road, on the Damascus Road, uh, he got knocked down off of his high horse uh, by the resurrected Jesus. Uh, and he began to have a grand revelation of how wonderful uh, Jesus is. Uh, Jesus had to slap him down uh, before he gave Jesus his full attention. Uh, and I submit to you, don't let God have to slap you down uh, off of your high horse uh, before you get to know him. Uh, because of the truth be told, Jesus has had to slap some of us down. Y'all looking at me funny. Off of our high horse. We were going in the wrong direction. And Jesus put us on the road called straight. Paul thought he didn't need Jesus. Earlier in his life, Jesus could do nothing for him. And now years later, Paul said, I can't do nothing without Jesus. Is there anybody that can say, I can't do nothing without the Lord. Paul, he, he said, I want a relationship with Jesus. Let me tell you something. It's good to have your name on my roll. Come on, can I get a witness in here? I got your name, I got your address, I got your phone number and your email, but don't mean nothing unless your name is written huh, in the Lamb's Book of Life. Huh, unless you know God and God knows you. Can I get a witness in here? And then he says, I want you to know something. He said, I want to be in verse 9, found in him. 
and not having a righteousness of my own. He said, I want to be found in him. He said, if we want to know where I am, if you want to know my GPS, if you want to know my location, I, he said, I'm in Jesus Christ. For he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. If you want to know where I am, I am behind the cross of Jesus Christ. And is there anybody that can thank God that you found yourself when you found yourself in Jesus Christ? Come on, give God a praise. He said, you want to know where I am? I'm in Jesus. And then he said, I want you to know. He said, I know I can't be righteous on my own. And I don't care how much any pastor in any church preach. There are always some folks who think they can go to heaven based on their own works. Every now and then, Reverend Althea, every pastor got to preach that, it is, it, that we cannot be saved by our works. We cannot be saved by our own efforts. That's why Jesus died on the cross so that we can have a right to the tree of life. It is his blood and his blood alone that saves us and rearranges us. Is there anybody that's glad to say, yeah, I do some good works. Yeah, I give some money, but that ain't going to save me. I work because he has saved me. He paid the price. And I think you ought to give God the glory. Because Paul said, the reason that I am what I am and can do what I do is only because of Jesus. Uh, say, look, here's what he said. That this is where I want to lend my hat. Because I ain't going to be here long. Because I got to get to that ham y'all going to give to me. I got to make you smile sometime. He said, I want to know Christ. And then he says, I want to know him. Choir, y'all help me. Y'all just helped me this morning. And the power of his resurrection. He said, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. The interesting thing, because we know about Jesus' resurrection. Satan threw everything he could at Jesus beat him, tortured him. God allowed in his permissive will Jesus to be killed on the cross. Jesus died. I know he died. But wonderfully, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He was brought back to life. He was not in a coma. He was not asleep. He was dead. And Jesus experienced the resurrection power of God. And now he's alive forevermore. So much so that he can say, because I live, you can live also. But now Paul is saying he wanted uh, it's all right to sit in the pew. He said it's all right to know some scriptures. Uh, it's all right to do the, the, dot all the I's and cross the T's. But he says this is what I want. I want power. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Not just on Easter, but I want to know him every day of my life. He said, I want to live in victory and experience the power of God. And I stopped by here to tell you, don't get it confused. Don't get it twisted. Christianity is a power movement. It's not it's personal. It's not mama's religion. His main desire is to know Jesus Christ in his resurrection power. Turn to your neighbor and say power. I'm not talking about a philosophy. He's talking about I want to walk in power. I want to live in power. I, want to, I was born in power. And because we belong to Jesus, we are powerful. In other words, we are full of power. Power, huh? And that's why you got to get up huh, off of your hind legs huh, and say, I'm powerful. Huh? I know that's going to shock some of you because huh? the devil told you you were nothing huh, and nobody. Huh? But if any man be in Christ, huh, you're a new creature. Huh? And the same spirit huh, that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, huh? I'm in the Bible, y'all. Huh? He said it dwells uh, in you. Huh? And the reason that some of us don't walk in this resurrection power huh, is because the devil Never wants you to be ignorant huh, and think that the power was only for Jesus. Huh? And Jesus said, I died. Huh? He said, I huh? 
He said, because I live, you shall live also. Is there anybody that wants to live? I don't want to just be scraping by. I don't just want to be moseying along. I want to be able to lift my head and walk in victory. And because of Jesus, we're powerful. Hey, don't you know, because of Jesus, signs and wonders follow us. Come on, y'all ain't going to talk to you. You better claim that. Because we're in Jesus, we speak with new tongues that the Spirit gives us utterance. We lay hands on the sick, and they recover. The anointing of God flows on you. And you better, you better see, the reason we don't walk in power is because you don't claim that Jesus has already died for you to have. Come on, give God a praise. It ain't just about the pastor. It ain't just about the minister. God expects all of us to walk talking live in resurrection power. When you walk in a room, the atmosphere ought to change. I'm going to say that again. When you walk in a room, the atmosphere ought to change. Stop waiting on somebody else to show up. God said you show up and let the anointing change the atmosphere. Let me tell you something. The devil is not impressed with your wardrobe. I know some big words, and you know some big words, too. He ain't impressed with your fancy words. He's not impressed with your position and your standing in the community. He's not impressed with all the trappings of worldly success. The devil fears and trembles when a Christian is walking around in authority. When you walk and know you've got the resurrection power of Jesus on the inside of you. He said, I want you to know I've got one job. He said, I want you to know I'm focused on these things. He said, I spent all my time getting to know Jesus and walking in his resurrection power. And I got good news for you. It ain't just for Jesus and it ain't just for Paul. You and I are supposed to walk and live in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm walking in resurrection power. No, no, no. You got to understand, he says, it's a specific kind of resurrection. He said, I want to walk and I want to live in the power of his, his resurrection. That's right, the way it happened for Jesus is the way he expects for it to happen in our life. We had a study here. What, what happened with Jesus? What, what happened with Jesus? Because if it happened with Jesus, then Jesus expects us to appropriate that in our lives. You know, it's easy to come to church, hear a sermon, and get nothing out of it because you don't use none of it. And I can do a whole lot. I make you feel good, but if you don't use what has been given to you, it ain't going to do you no good. He said, if you're going to live in the power of his resurrection, we got to study how God resurrected Jesus. First thing you got to know, if you're going to live in the power of his resurrection, you got to understand you have purpose. And when you have purpose, nothing can stop you. I'm going to say, when you have purpose, Nothing can stop you. Jesus lived a life on purpose, with a purpose, because Jesus lived a life of purpose. He could not be stopped. He got slowed down, but God told Jesus that even if they kill you, I'm going to bring you back more powerful than before because my purpose is eternal. Some of y'all have got purposes that are temporary. Your purpose is only for this week, only for this year. But you better begin to find out what your eternal purpose is in Jesus Christ. Because once you find out what your eternal purpose is, you cannot, you will not be stopped. And the devil is scared. When you find your purpose for living, he knows there's nothing he can do huh, to stop you. Huh? Do I have some purposeful folks in the house? Huh? Come on, give God a And because you walk in purpose, 
purpose, there are some promises God gave to you. He said in Romans 8 and 28, all things work together for good to them that are called according to his purpose. Uh, is there anybody here that can thank God? I've had some good stuff in my life. I've had some ugly stuff in my life. But I thank God that I'm called according to his purpose. And when I'm called according to his purpose, he'll put it in a bowl. And he'll mix it up. And he'll make it work together for my good. See, yeah. Next time you go through hell and high water, say it's for my good. It's for my good. He's working it out. Somebody ought to praise God. Because right now he's working. He's working. He's working it out. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. Turn to your neighbor and say, I cannot be stopped. Uh, now, one thing you got to understand, Jesus lived in resurrection confidence. Resurrection confidence. And you better start living like that. Some people will mistake that as arrogance. But if you know that you know that you know, Anybody got to know that you know religion? <laughs> Jesus said, I want you to know something. He said, I want you to know they're going to mess with me one day. They're going to kill me. They'll hand me over to some evil folks. But I want you to know, <laughs> don't lose courage. Because I'm going to rise. Rise again. He never wavered in his resurrection confidence. In other words, he didn't just tell that to his friends, but he told his enemy that no matter what you try to do to me, I'm coming back stronger than ever before. Who am I talking to up in here? Up in here. I'm not experimenting. I've tried this for myself because no weapon that is formed against somebody that has a purpose shall be able to prosper. Can I get a witness in here? And sometimes you need to tell the devil you can huff and you can puff and you can try to blow my house down but I'm standing on the rock and his name is Jesus. Is there anybody in here that has learned to walk in resurrection confidence? It may be rough but I'm coming back stronger. Somebody say yeah. It's going to work out for my good. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to walk with me. It's nice if you do. But I'll go if I got to go all by myself. Somebody say yeah. When you got this confidence, you can say like he said in Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing. That he that has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I've got confidence that God is still healing. I've got confidence that God is still working miracles. I've got the favor of God all over my life. And if you try to stop me, even if you set traps for me, even if you try to wipe me off, God is going to cause no weapon that is formed against me shall be able uh, to prosper. Uh, come on, lift up your head. Uh, stop walking around uh, like you're defeated uh, and walk around in confidence uh, because you can't lose uh, with the stuff we use. Come here, Reverend Ike. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Turn to your neighbor and say power. Hey, 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 hey. Power, number three, to overcome stuff that's never been done before. Creative power. One of the things that stops many folks is that you pray and you always got this question. God, how you gonna do it? 
And that messes up your faith. Because your mind cannot comprehend how awesome God is. Because God can work it out for Reverend Anderson one way. And he'll work it out for me another way. He'll do it one way for me, for me this year. And next year he'll do something entirely different. Why do you say Christianity is boring? Because every day God is creating more ways out of no ways. Instead of asking God how you're going to do it, begin to thank God that it's already done in the spirit. I don't know when and I don't know how but I know that he's going to show up and show out and when he does he just might do something that he's never done before. Come on Bethel. 2023 is the year. Get prepared to have your mind blown. Somebody say yeah. Does anybody know that he's still doing exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask a thing according to the power that worketh on the inside of us somebody say yeah come on anybody know that the Lord will make a way somehow how are you going to do it somehow where are you going to go down Faith Street where are you going to go down Trust Boulevard where are you going to go? I'm going down to Blessing Boulevard. And when I get there, there's going to be a rainbow of blessings. Somebody say yeah. Come on, church. Get all excited because God is going to show you some stuff that you never saw before. But you got to get ready for it. Come on, get ready, get ready, get ready. And I'm closing out with this because y'all see I'm kind of excited. Amen. Check this out. Turn to your neighbor and say resurrection power. resurrection power. Don't you leave here. Don't you leave here without that power. Listen. listen. Jesus' resurrection power causes the stink of your life to go away. Jesus' resurrection power causes the stink of your life to go away and when it does people won't recognize you from your past I can sit down on that one I minister of music brother Christopher Wilson and his beautiful wife sister Keisha are licensed morticians and embalmers they went to school they got degrees in mortuary science. They can do it all. They can do the business, they can do the embalming, and they can sing for you. Amen, they're the total package, amen. They can, amen, they'll hook you up from beginning to end, give you a package deal. I ain't trying to drum up there. Amen. And, and they know, they know that after a person dies, body that has no life goes through some changes. Am I right, Chris? Because that life does not support the life-giving processes of the body. And after, after and almost immediately when they die, the body begins to eat itself. The enzymes cause the body to stink. And when Jesus got up, with his resurrected life, the stink stopped. I'm gonna say that again. When Jesus got up with his resurrected body, the stink stopped. And I wanna encourage somebody today. You were in a messed up situation and it died and it started to stink up everything. But I declare to you, if you hold on to your resurrection power, God is going to take away the stink out of your life. He's going to breathe Holy Ghost air fresheners all over your life. 
He's going to breathe the freshener of grace and the freshener of mercy and the freshener of love and the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to bring back some stuff in your life. Somebody say yeah. And when you're in the stink of a dead situation, no one wants to be around you. They can't stand the stink. But I've got good news for somebody. When God, I said when God breathes his freshness on you, people that used to didn't want to be around you, they'll be running to try to get around the anointing that's over your life. They won't even know why they're attracted to you. But you know, spirit of the living God, fresh on me. It's the sweet smell of the Holy Ghost in my life. Somebody say yeah. And when Jesus resurrects the situation, check this out, I'm finished. When Jesus was resurrected, people saw Jesus that knew Jesus for years. They knew Jesus. They ate with Jesus. They'd been around Jesus. But when they saw Jesus, they didn't recognize him. So you got to understand when resurrection power comes in your life, you got to understand that what was before is now no longer. People look at you now and they don't even recognize you because God has done such an amazing turnaround in my life. Is there anybody that can thank God that sometimes you don't even recognize yourself? You used to have a filthy mouth. Ha, used to have a filthy mouth ha, filled with lust ha, but aren't you glad ha, he turned ha, turned that thing around ha, used to have a bad temper ha, but now you get up in the morning ha, and God allows you to speak ha, words of love ha, words of grace ha, and words of mercy ha, somebody ought to praise God ha, come on tell the truth ha, when you look back over your life ha, you don't even recognize yourself because God has done an amazing turnaround. Can I get a witness in here? Well, I got to get out of here. This is our second time around. But I stopped by to tell you, resurrection means it's never too late. Never too late for God. It may be too late for your doctor. It may be too late for the bank, but it's never too late for God. Because I didn't know it's not over until God says it's over. I'm going to say that again. It's not over until God says it over. Because God has the power to work in your life. And as long as you got faith in God, God can turn that thing around. Come here, Tennessee. Justin is from Tennessee. Many of you heard about what happened in Nashville, Tennessee. Too young, erudite, and handsome, and young, 30-some-year-old African-American lawmakers, Justin Jones, and the Brother Pearson ha, demonstrated on the Nashville on the State House floor ha, to raise ha, awareness about gun violence. They had just experienced in Nashville ha, the shooting of six innocent adults ha, and children, and they wanted to raise a righteous awareness ha, so that they could pass some common sense ha, gun law. Ha. How many know it's all right to have a gun, but you don't need 40 or 50 rounds ha, to kill a deer? Y'all ain't got to like me, but I know what I'm talking about. Ha. You don't need nobody that's got mental illness huh, to be able to purchase a gun. Huh? You ought to have a background check huh, when you get a gun. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. And these brothers were subjected huh, to one of the most heinous miscarriages of dignity and lack of fairness in the history of government. Hung them on the cross, lynched them. That's what they did in the state house. They brought up unjust charges, but uh, 
the, the same white representatives that did the same thing. They didn't vote her out. She's a good person, but they just didn't vote her out. And they devoted those two, thank you, Jesus, those two young men out. And they thought that it would embarrass them. They thought it would end uh, Reverend Shackelford, their political career. They wrote them off. But how many know that God has the last word in your life? Glory to God. God flipped. I said he flipped the script. And he's turning that thing around. Now they're more celebrated and more popular than ever before. They've been on national TV 24-7. Kamala Harris, I dignified, vice president, made a special trip on the plane to see these brothers. President Biden said, I got, I, I'd like to be there, but I'm going to do a special Zoom call to let you know, be encouraged. God will strengthen your heart. They were lifting up the cause for gun control. Now they're lifting it up higher than ever before. And I believe if you keep your eyes on those two young men, they're going to go to a higher office. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. Somebody say yeah. They tried to kill them, but they didn't know they only made them stronger than ever. Is there anybody that knows there were some folks that tried to kill you? They wrote you off. They said you were going down and you never come back. But you need to look him in the face now and say, how you like me now? How you like me now? I'm more blessed. And you help me to be blessed. Because the more you put your foot on me, the God said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. Come on, give God a praise. How can I say thanks for all the things that he has done for me? Give God glory. I can't finish this sermon. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. You gotta go back in. Lord, I lift your name.
groove. Come on, lean with it, rock with it. Come on. Come on, yeah. You, got it. You, got it. you know, you can have fun and praise the Lord. In this very serious moment, we praise him because all the hell came against Jesus. But because he had that resurrection power inside of his life, no matter what the enemy tried to do, it did not work. And I'm speaking prophetically over your life. Now, you got to claim this. I'm going to appropriate it for you, but some things you got to get for yourself. You got to say today, no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. Let me tell you, when you get to work tomorrow, no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got resurrection power. Now say it like you really made a resurrection power. That's what we ain't playing. We are not playing with the devil. Amen. He has won his last battle in the name of Jesus. There's drawing power too. You know what Jesus said? If we would lift him up, he would draw all persons unto himself. We've been lifting him up from the call to worship, through the message, through the praise, through the music. We've been lifting him up and the Holy Spirit is touching somebody's heart right now. And that spirit is saying, I want you to come down and start the rest of your life. Give your life to Jesus today. Because Paul said, the most important thing in my life, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. And I stopped by, it's the best thing that you could ever do to know him, being saved. Anybody glad to be saved? You, you know that if you passed away tonight, your family might cry, but they know they'll see you again for eternity. You're here today as the choir sings this victorious song. I want you to come down within victory. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to join the church. I'm looking for you. Come on down the way from the earth to the cross. Genesis to peace. From the cross to the grave. From the grave. Lord, I live. Come on, give me sisters in Christ. And so we live in a world where they want us to be uh, disempowered. They want us to be weak. They want us to rely on man. But Lord, there's some folks in here that know that all of our help, all of our help, all of our help comes from you. Lord, we thank you for the gifts you've given us, but we're like Paul. We got degrees on the wall, but we wouldn't, tr we wouldn't, we wouldn't, that's nothing but trash compared to the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. So Lord, we, we, we help us to be more sold out for you. Lord, help us not to be compromising. Lord, help us to be strong in you and the power of your might. Lord, help us to understand that this resurrection power is not for some special folks, but it's for everybody. Yes. 
No, we pray that resurrection power over every young person that's able to understand what I said today. We thank you that there are going to be some young people who are going to cast out devils. There are going to be some young people who are going to be able to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There are some folks who have some hopes and dreams that the devil said are never going to come to pass. But Lord, we thank you in the Bible you did some of your best work with people 80 years of age and above. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. And just like you resurrected Jesus, resurrect the dead areas of our life. Speak, speak, breathe. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. And Lord, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that didn't give their life to Christ, we're going to settle it right now in the name of Jesus. If you're in the house and you never, ever accepted Jesus Christ, you're not going to leave here on this resurrection Sunday and not be right. Maybe you were scared to come to the front, and if you're already saved, you don't mind praying this prayer with me today. Everybody pray with me. Mean it from your heart. Confess them, and you are saved. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for demonstrating power. You had people who are against you, but your power overcame them all. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you. You buried my sin on Saturday. But my greatest thanks is that you rose on Sunday for my victory. I claim you. I confess you as the Lord and Savior of my life. I walk in victory. I walk in the anointing. I walk in power. No weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. Give God a praise in here, everybody. Give me that. Give me a little bit more. You can. Everybody say.
I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. And we leave here walking in your anointing, walking in your power. Daily Easter victory in our lives. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And we thank you, Lord, that if any person be in you, they are new creatures. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And we say threefold, amen, for there's power in the name of God.